So the first question of the seminar sheet from week 14 was asking about uh, sketching the case for spherical aberration for converging lengths. So first of all, spherical aberration means we have optical axes and converging lens associated with that. If I'm drawing a lens, I always have to ensure I've got the two focal points here. And now we know from a converging lens, if I send light in parallel light beams, they'll then change direction and run through the focus point. If I have some other parallel light beams, they should do the same thing. They should go through the focus point. However, spherical aberration means in real lenses, that's not always the case. In real lenses, if these are rays A that have a certain fixed distance from the optical axis, they'll have their associated focal point. If I now talk about um, rays that are closer to the optical axis, they'll run through a focus point that I've exaggerated now to be a little bit further away. So spherical aberration means parallel light beams that have a distance that's different from each other from the optical axis will have a different focal length. So closer rays to the optical axis will have one focal point. If I go further away, that will have another one. So a large aperture opening will not have a defined focus point, but an area in which that focus. A way to improve the performance of a real lens is now to introduce an aperture That might only allow a thin opening um, of the lens to be visible, i.e. the beams of B, and you can see I'm only limiting the beams that are going to run through the focus point here, not the far ones out there, and I'm limiting the spherical aberration effect here.